Good evening. This is the Guyana Learning Channels and News in Capsule for Monday, June 28, 2021. Here's a look at the top stories we will be covering. Great turnout as CSEC CAPE commences. GPF approves use of body cameras. CJ dismisses police promotion cases. In the world of sport, Alicoc to represent Guyana in Tokyo. Regionally, Barbados curfew to end in June. And on the international scene, UK bans cryptocurrency. With the news in detail, I am Danielle Singh. As the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination CAPE and the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate CSEC examination began today, the Honorable Minister of Education Priya Manikchan visited CSEC students at the Richard Ishmael Secondary School to wish them all the best. CSEC and CAPE CXE's exams begin this morning and they're expected to go for just about a month uh, with Guyanese children writing in excess of 33 of the 35 subjects, I believe. Um, I expect our children to do very well. We are one of the countries that took some bold decisions last year and brought our children back out, but not because we wanted to or not by ourselves. We listened to what teachers, students and parents said they needed and we brought the students out for face-to-face -face learning, but with a caveat that any student who did not want to come did not have to come. Um, we also gave support through masks and face shields and vitamin support and um, just however we could help during that period. During her visit, the minister noted that while the batch of students are the first to write these exams after a prolonged period of the pandemic, she is confident that they are as prepared as they can be academically. Ranks of the Guyana Police Force have started wearing cameras affixed to their uniforms as a part of the plan to increase accountability and improve public trust. The use of cameras is among several measures the GPF has adopted to capture evidence at crime scenes as part of a wider plan to increase its professionalism. The initiative was first introduced in 2015 and has been expanded to all 12 police divisions. Head of GPS Information Technology Department, Superintendent German Johnson, said the body cameras would increase the safety of both police and civilians. Information from the cameras would also be used for training. Superintendent Johnson said that there is a standard operating procedure for the use of body cameras. Technical staff are stationed in all divisional regions to ensure the cameras are operational before a rank is issued with a body camera. This means that the date and time on the camera must be correct and the storage clear and fully functional. The superintendent said ranks are also required to keep the cameras turned on from the time they are issued. If an incident occurs during the ranks' time on duty, the footage will be reviewed for evidential value. The footage will also be archived for a period in an event a report is made against the officer. The superintendent said cameras could ensure quality of evidence captured from incidents and speed up justice for victims. This was extracted and modified from the Department of Public Information. Chief Justice Acton Roxanne George, in a ruling handed down on Monday, did not grant any of the reliefs sought in a case initiated by Senior Superintendent Calvin Brutus, which challenged the 2020 promotion of police ranks by the Police Service Commission. During her ruling, the Chief Justice iterated that none of the reliefs sought can be granted insisting that there was nothing unlawful in considering a disciplinary matter in making a determination of whether a police rank can be promoted or not. Brutus and several other ranks had asked the court to declare that the PSC's decision to not promote ranks who have a disciplinary action was unlawful and also quashed the promotions of Edmund Cooper, Philip Azor, and Curly Simon, all senior superintendents of police. The Chief Justice said that the points ventilated during the hearing of the matter show that there is a poor and haphazard system for dealing with disciplinary matters of the police officers. As a solution, she said, this needs to be urgently addressed with requisite systems being instituted. This was extracted and modified from the newsroom. And now in the world of sports. Youth Commonwealth Games silver medalist Kevin Alicock is heading to the Olympics in Tokyo, Japan from July 23 to August 8. Alicock, 22, is the first Guyanese boxer in 25 years to qualify for the prestigious Games, following in the footsteps of John Douglas at the 1996 Atlanta Games. This was extracted and modified from Newsroom. And now for regional news. After six months of restrictions, residents of Barbados will finally be able to go outside on June 30. Prime Minister Mia Motley 
announced that the curfew ends at the end of this month, much to the relief of locals. Motley indicated that the decision was made after examining the downward trajectory of COVID-19 cases over the last 90 days, with single digits for all of June. The Prime Minister reported that just under a third of the adult population has been vaccinated. She stated that 91,561 people have received their first dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine and over 65,000 people are fully vaccinated. Motley revealed that the government is awaiting a mass order of vaccines and is in the process of locating jabs for children ages 12 to 18. She expressed that she hoped the children will be vaccinated before the September 2021-22 school term starts. This was extracted and modified from Loop News. And now for international news. Binance, the world's biggest cryptocurrency exchange, has been banned by the UK's financial regulator. The Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, has ruled that the firm cannot conduct any regulated activity in the UK. It also issued a consumer warning about Binance.com, advising people to be wary of the adverts promising high returns on crypto asset investments. Binance said the FCA notice would have no direct impact on the services it provided from the website Binance.com. Binance's existing crypto exchange is not UK-based, so despite the FCA ruling, there will be no impact on UK residents who use the website to purchase and sell cryptocurrencies. The FCA does not regulate cryptocurrencies but require exchanges to register them. Binance has not been registered with the FC and therefore is not allowed to operate and exchange in the UK. The FCA move comes amid pushback from the regulators around the world against cryptocurrency platforms. This was extracted and modified from BBC. With that, we've reached the end of today's edition of GLC News. Join us again tomorrow at 8pm right here on the Guyana Learning Channel for more educational news and updates. On behalf of the technical team, thanks for watching and remember to stay safe, Guyana.